Praise the Lord, precious saints. Um, this is coming to you all the way uh, from the prayer mountain here in Australia. Uh, even as the Lord has sent me uh, to the prayer mountain uh, to pray on behalf of the nations. Uh, everything that is happening right now you know, the Bible says that these are the signs of his coming. It's not a time for Christians to be asleep. It's not a time for Christians to be in slumber. For even the Bible says in the book of Matthew, it speaks about in chapter 16, it speaks about while good men slept, meaning while men sleep, the devil came to sow the tars. And that is what is happening now because people are not praying in this hour. This is an hour to be praying. This is an hour to be alert. Not only is the Messiah coming, but also it, in, it, in, it, in, it requires us as Christians to be praying, praying fervently. The Bible says to be praying at all times. What does that mean? It means to be praying in the spirit, to pray with understanding. So I just encourage you in this hour, wherever you are across this whole across the whole globe, whatever nation you're in, we need to be in prayer in this hour. We need to be standing as a church, as a body of Christ, praying on behalf of God's perfect will in this hour. This is an hour that the Holy Spirit is still here. The Holy Spirit has not been taken. On the day of the rapture when the Holy Spirit is taken, then the great tribulation will start to take place. But while we are still here, while we are still here with the help of the Holy Spirit, this is a time to pray. You know, the Bible says in Romans 8, it says when we don't know what to pray, the Spirit of God prays on our behalf. This is time for us to be praying with the help of the Holy Spirit, to pray that the Holy Spirit will intercede on our behalf, even in the things that you don't know what to pray. Even as I'm praying here for the nations, the Bible says in Psalm 2, it says, ask of the nations and I will give them for your inheritance. Are you praying for the nations? Are you praying for your nation? Are you praying for the nations next to you? This is a time to cry out for God to come and touch the nations, to release his fire, to release his end time revival across the nations of the earth. Even at a time of uncertainty, even at a time of distress that is taking place in this very hour, the Bible says that even in a time of distress, there is a promise of deliverance. There is a promise of deliverance, meaning there's a promise of revival in this hour. There's a promise of God to pour out his spirit on this hour upon the churches. Revival is for the church of Jesus Christ. But we must learn to endure. For the Bible says that we must learn to endure. What is enduring? For me, I used to like long distance running. So when you go on a long distance run, you must learn to endure. You can't run a 50 meter race in a long distance race. You can't run a 50 meter race in a marathon. Otherwise you will lose breath. You will not be able to endure. You'll not be able to finish the race. And that is what it's like with the Christian walk. You know, many of us just quickly prepare because we think, okay, the Lord is coming back because so-and-so has prophesied this or so-and-so certain particular Jewish feast. And then all of a sudden people just get ready as though just getting ready. But then when that September passes, are they willing to endure? This Christian walk is something that we must learn to endure. We must learn to endure. When you're running a race... You're there to just focus on the race. You're not going to be distracted by the things that are happening around you. That's why Jesus said that these times will come. They will come. Yes, the signs are here of the coming of the Messiah. But he also said, be not troubled for the end is not yet. Meaning when the Holy Spirit is with us, we still have an opportunity to pray. We still have an opportunity for God to intervene, even in the midst of elections, even in the midst of uncertainty, we can still pray. 
you know, the United States affects the whole world. So really, for us, we should be praying for this nation that God's perfect will will take place within the nation of United States. But many people are saying, oh, you know, United States is doomed. It's, you know, but it doesn't mean that we stop praying. Yes, there are a lot of abominations, but God is still in control. He's still in control at this very hour. And our prayers have the ability to change situations. Are you praying for revival within the United States? Are you praying for revival within the nations of the world? Revival is happening. I'm seeing it in all the nations that I'm going to for those that are hungry. Are you hungry for the Lord? It is a time to pray. It is a time to cry out to God and say, God, we need your touch. We need you to come and pour out your spirit upon the nations. Even in a time of distress, there is a promise of deliverance. I don't know where you are today. Whatever nation that you are, this message is for you because it's not just for Australians. It's not just for Americans. It is for the nations of the earth. The Messiah is coming. Yes, we know. But it is also the promise of revival in this hour. But revival will only come to those churches and those people that are crying out for revival. Are you crying out for revival? Do you believe revival can come to your nation? You know, revival can come to any nation that humbles themselves. 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by myself would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then he would hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. All we need is humble people that will pray on behalf of the nations of the earth, on behalf of your nation, on behalf of your government. It is not too late. It is not too late. Until the Messiah comes, then it's too late. But it's not too late. And while the Holy Spirit is still with us in this hour, he says, be not troubled, for the end is not yet. Meaning there must be something between the trouble and the end, which I believe that is the hope of revival through the help of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Psalm 127, it says, if the Lord doesn't build the house, then the builders build it in vain. When we don't learn to work with and through the help of the Holy Spirit, we build in vain. We do everything in vain. You, go, you do all your church activities without the Holy Spirit. You're doing it in vain. In actual fact, there are many church programs today, but there are many that don't have the Holy Spirit involved in those. So if the Holy Spirit was to be taken... Would they know any difference because the Holy Spirit wasn't there in the first place? We need the help of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. But if we pray in the Spirit, we pray and learn to pray with the help of the Holy Spirit, God will come. God will come and visit us. And all we need to do is to continue to be humble. All we need to do is to continue to keep a, a broken heart and a contrite spirit. So wherever you are, you know, for me, I'm on this prayer mountain. And I say, God, I'm not going to leave here until I have an encounter with you. Lord, I want you more. I want you desperately. Because without the Holy Spirit, I can't do anything. I'm saying, God, I can't do anything. You know, my job is easy. All I have to do is show up because God does the rest. In actual fact, I do absolutely nothing. All I have to do is make myself available for the Holy Spirit. Are you desperate for the Holy Spirit today? Are you desperate? You know, we must learn to endure this race. The Bible says in James 5.11, it says this. It says, blessed are those that endure. You know, because it goes on to speak about Job. And it says, Job endured the race. He endured it, but God loved him and showed mercy and compassion upon him that because he endured the race. You know, Job was challenged with many things and the devil was out to, to get him, to steal, to take away many things from him, to kill his children, to, uh, to remove all things. But he refused to curse God. He refused to give up. He endured to the end. And what was the end? He was blessed. He was given everything. Everything was restored back to him. And so it can be with anybody that chooses to endure. Are you enduring in this hour? Or as soon as a problem comes in your life, 
you complain. Now, Job had good reason to complain. Everything was taken from him. Everything was stripped from him. But he didn't choose to. He did refuse to curse God. Even his wife said, aren't you going to curse God? And he refused to. He refused to because he endured the race. Are you enduring this race? There is still time ahead of us. You know, there's still time. If the Lord chooses to tarry, what are you going to do with your life? Are you enduring this race? If he doesn't come next month or the month after, are you going to get disappointed? Are you going to get angry at him? Or are you going to learn to endure this race and say, God, while the Holy Spirit is here, I need to be praying. I need to be preparing. And also, Lord, I'm going to pray on behalf of the nations. I'm going to pray for revival to come to the church. The Bible says in Hebrews 10:36. It says, for you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of the Father, you may receive the promise. We need endurance for this race. That as we do the will of the Father, which is to pray and to pray on behalf of the nations, is to believe God can come and pour out his spirit, then we will receive a reward on that day that he comes. The Bible also goes on to say in Hebrews 12, verse 1, it says, then it goes on to say that there is a witnesses in heaven that are looking down upon us. Then it says, therefore, let us lay aside every weight and sin, which is so easily snares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, when you try to run away a race and you're carrying extra baggage, it's going to ensnare your race. It's going to make it difficult for you. This is not an hour to be running in a race with extra baggage. So if there's sin in your life, if there are certain things that are hindering you and stopping you and are creating a weight upon your, on your walk with God, it's time to let go of those things. It's time to release them to the Lord because this is the hour to be running free with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Then it goes on to say in verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy of that was set before him, he endured the cross. So it says here, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. But he endured the cross. So just as he endured the cross, we also must endure this race, this Christian walk that we're currently on. Even as we're preparing for the coming of the Lord, if he doesn't come back tomorrow, if he doesn't come back next year, as many believe that he's going to come very soon. But if he doesn't come, are you going to be able to endure? Are you going to be able to finish this long distance race that's before us? The Bible then goes on to say in the book of uh, Matthew 10, 22, it says that you'll be hated, but he endures to the end shall be saved. Are you going to wait to the end? This is a time to pray for the nations. For me, I'm personally praying out for Indonesia at the moment, praying for America, for the coming elections. You know, this is an hour to say, God, we need you to do a move of God. For me, with everyone else is saying, hey, there's no hope for America. This is the hour for revival. That's why God says, get on a plane and go there at the time of the elections. Now, for other people, they're saying you're crazy. But that's what God does, because I believe that in the midst of a time of the signs of his coming, he says, be not troubled. There is an opportunity for revival in America again. There's an opportunity for revival for all the nations. But it is time for you to be praying for your nations. Pray for God. And if you're from another nation, you can pray for America, because America will affect the rest of the world. So we must be praying for this nation. We must be doing everything that we can in this hour to make sure that we endure the race that we're on and that, that we are preparing for his coming. The Bible then says, 1 Corinthians 13, 7, it says, love endures all things. Are you enduring all things? Are you running the race or are you distracted by any little distraction that comes along? This is not an hour to be distracted. It's an hour to endure endure to the end then the bible says it goes on in 1 corinthians 3 14 if anyone's work which he has built on it endures he will receive a reward for me i want to endure this race to the very end 
You know, those that are faithful to the end shall receive the reward. Are you enduring this race? Are you running this long distance race? However long it is until the Lord comes, we must be prepared, must live a holy life. We must stay in his will, but we must not give up. We must not say, oh, it is the end. It's the end. So you stop praying. No, this is an hour to be praying like never before. You know, this is an hour to be pursuing God and seeking those things which are above. My belief is that even in this time, there is a chance for revival in every single nation. If any people anywhere are just humble enough to say, God, we need you more. And maybe things have to get worse to drive people to be hungry for God. But whatever the case is, I'm saying, God, whatever you're doing in this hour, don't do it without me. Don't pass us by. Don't pass America by. Don't pass Australia by. Don't pass Asia by. Don't pass Africa by. But Lord, whatever you're doing, pour out your spirit. We want to be part of that move of God. We want to be empowered by your Holy Spirit. This is an hour to be fasting. Yes. When you fast and pray, it means you're making a sacrifice to God because you want more of him. Jesus Christ is the hope of all nations. He is the only hope for America. He's the only hope for Australia. He's the only hope for all the nations of the earth. But are you praying for your nation that your nation may come to know Jesus Christ? If no one is sent, who will go? There are many people waiting to be harvested in this hour because the harvest is ready, but the laborers are still few. And I'm talking about those laborers that move with the Holy Spirit. We need the anointing of God. We need, no longer do we need another definition of the gospel. We've got too many of those. But we need a simple definition of the gospel, backed up with the power of God, that people may come back to Christ in this hour. This is an hour to come to Him. Wherever you are, whatever nation that you're listening to this message from, Maybe this message is directly for you, but I'm praying that God will come and bring a move in your family. He will come and bring a move in your life. Maybe you feel that you need a second touch. Maybe you feel that you're a bit dry in your spiritual walk. I'm here to encourage you and to, and to tell you that you must endure. You must go a little bit further. The race is not finished yet. It's not time to put the gloves down. You know, for me, I used to uh, practice boxing, a lot of those. So I used to have to endure many rounds of 10 rounds of boxing. But you, you can't give up. You can't just come up with, you know, with, with a strong start and then not finish the race, even in long distance running. We must learn to endure. We must learn to have steadfast walk with God, not an up and down that's based on emotions, but something that is grounded in the word of God. So, you know, you know the, the Word of God without the Spirit, it leads to death. And the Spirit without the Word leads to error. So stay in the Word and stay full of the Holy Spirit in this hour that God may come and touch you. So let me just pray for you now. Maybe, maybe you need prayer right now and I'm here from the prayer mountain. That's the purpose that I'm here, to pray for the nations, to pray for the saints, to pray for more of God that He will just come and come into people's lives. So Lord, I pray right now for every single person that is watching right now, that you will come and bless them, that you will touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet right now. You will fill them with your anointing. You will fill them with your fire, Lord. I pray that they would receive and be ignited by this revival fire that is going across the nations in this hour. Lord, I pray that you will bring healing to every sick body, every sick person, right now, wherever that spirit of infirmity is upon their lives, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to come out and go back to the pit of hell right now. For those that are being oppressed, I command every devil that is coming against your life to be removed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray today for the anointing and the fire of revival to come into those that are watching right now, those that are hearing the, the the, the, the words of this tongue, let it penetrate their hearts right now. As the Spirit of God comes to revive His church. The Bible says, you know, when, when Jesus was going around in, in the book of uh, Luke, 
and and in in Luke chapter uh, 12 it says that Jesus came along and he says I came to bring fire oh how I wish the fire had come he was talking about the Holy Spirit we need that fire of the Holy Spirit even as I'm talking to you, I feel the anointing of God, the fire that's in my bones. Jeremiah said, there is, it's like fire is in my bones because his word is like fire. But since the day you were born again, since the day the blood of Jesus covered you, have you received the Holy Spirit? Jesus said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. He didn't say be filled once. He said, be filled continually. Are you being filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you filling the spiritual thing or are you filling yourself with the TV? Are you filling yourself with the things of this world? See, if you are not full of the Holy Spirit, then another spirit's going to come and fill you. Maybe it's the spirit of lust. Maybe it's the spirit of anger. Maybe it's the spirit of depression. Maybe it's in a spirit of infirmity. When you are not full of the Holy Spirit, another spirit will come into you. That's why Jesus says, be full be full so my prayer is today that you will be full so heavenly father i pray right now holy spirit that you will come and baptize your people in spirit and in fire in the name of jesus christ let your spirit come and fall upon those that are listening to this recording right now that they may be filled with the holy spirit and i pray for each of them for there is a call upon each of your lives. And my prayer is that as you learn to spend time with God, you will start to see the higher calling that is upon your life. The higher calling is more important than your career. It's more important than all your relationships. The higher calling is that divine purpose that God has for your life. He has a purpose for your life. Do you want to know that purpose? Spend time with Him. Spend time reading the Word of God. Spend time seeking Him. Spend time, you know, uh, fasting and coming to know God. And God will also use you. Who is Pastor Robert? I'm just a humble person before the Lord. My job is easy. All I do is, is show up and God does the rest because without God, I can't do anything. That is why I'm desperate for Him. That is why it drives me all the way to travel all the way to this mountain. And then it takes, you know, a few hours to get to the top of this mountain. And it's a very steep mountain, but it is completely separated from every person so that I can just come and be with God that I may know Him. You know, the Bible says in John 17 verse 3, this is eternal life, that they may know you, Father, and your Son, Jesus Christ. That is eternal life, that they may know God. That's the purpose of our lives, that people may know God through our life, that they may know Him through our actions. They may know Him through our words. Is He part of your life? If He's part of your life, then there's something wrong because He doesn't want to be part of your life. He wants to be all of your life. Be filled with the Holy Spirit that you may know Him. And that he may know you. And if you know your God, you will also do great exploits. But it's not you. It's the God that lives in you. Just like John the Baptist said, as Jesus increases, so must I decrease. When we decrease, then Christ, the hope of all glory, increases in our life. People don't want to see us. People want to see Christ, the hope of all glory. So I pray that the Lord will bless you tonight, even as I finish with a prayer. So Heavenly Father, every single person that is listening to this right now, I pray today, whatever their problems are, maybe it's financial breakthrough that they need. Lord, you know, because your word says, seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. But Lord, I pray you said also that you will supply for our needs, not according to our riches, but according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You are a miracle working God. You can make Make all things happen. Lord, for those that have marital issues, Lord, that you will come and bless their marriage. You will come and bring healing. You will come and bring forgiveness. You will come and bring those unbelieving spouses that they may come to know you. Whatever the situation is, Lord, those that are sick, you'll bring healing to their bodies today. Lord, those that are oppressed with wicked dreams today, that uh, dream pollution is cancelled in the name of Jesus Christ. Every devil that is tormenting you, it must leave now in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the situation that you are passing through right now, 
Jesus Christ is the hope of all glory. He is the answer. But you must learn to endure the race. Endurance. God bless you as you hear this message. And uh, this is uh, taken from the prayer mountain in Perth, Australia. God bless you so much.